Hey everyone and welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. Today I'll be sharing three clips and three encounter stories. I will leave a link below in the description section for the YouTube Shorts and Reddit encounters. If you have a story that you would like to share, then please forward your encounter stories directly to my email address at ontariocryptids at gmail.com so that I can share them with like-minded people. Also, please check the community tabs for an upcoming poll regarding whether I should set up a P.O. box for those who are too cool to send their encounter stories via email. Now sit back and relax as we begin with today's episode. This first clip comes from a YouTube channel called The Truck Planner. His channel is mainly about hiking and exploration videos. He will sometimes use Google Earth to find an interesting location and then he hikes in to show you the area. In this clip, he states that he was recording stock landscape shots with his drone when he captured this. I will play the video including the audio. Let's take a look. A while back. I was flying my drone to get stock footage of forest scenery. I spent about an hour flying my drone, and when I was doing my last flight for the day, I saw something really weird fly by my drone. Did you see it? I didn't think too much of it until I got home and was reviewing the footage again. In closer inspection, there is this odd object, flying very fast next to my drone. I have no idea what it is. It looks long, and flat, and it was flying very fast upward. It doesn't appear to be a bird or insect. You can even see it curve around here near the creek, and then come straight to my drone. I jokingly refer to this as Bigfoot's boomerang, because it's such a mystery. What do you think it is? This next clip comes from a YouTube channel called Cryptid Encounters. The channel posts cryptid shorts mainly. And for this short, it states that a strange creature was spotted in the trees and caught on camera. And it's hashtag Slovakia Yeti. So I'm guessing this is caught from a forest in Slovakia. So let's take a look. Okay, this last clip comes from the same YouTube channel called Cryptids Encounters. Uh, this channel, again, just posts uh, cryptid shorts. And this one is titled Skinwalker Crouch Down in the Yard. Let's take a look. This first encounter comes from a Reddit user named GCAT. This takes place in 2019 in rural Columbus, Ohio. I've experienced many odd and unexplainable events in my life, but this event has been on my mind for a few years now, and I finally decided to tell it. 
And I pray I'm not the only one who's experienced something like this. So let's start from the beginning. I graduated from high school in 2019, and I was promoted to supervisor for a kitchen in a nursing home down the street. Since I oversaw dinner, I didn't start work until about 3.30 p.m., and I would get home around 10 p.m. So for the first half of the day, I would be completely home alone, and I enjoyed that time. Solitude was always nice, especially when you're as introverted as I am. Normally, I would sleep in until about noon, but this time I decided to relax on the couch in our main living room and watched Kitchen Nightmares. I remembered nodding off and falling into a light sleep, so any small noise would wake me up. The first few times I cracked my eyes open, it would be from my cat jumping on me, so when I felt the cushion by my feet dip a bit, I figured it was my cat Peach. After a moment, I opened my eyes and I realized my younger sister was sitting at the end of the couch, her back to me. I was half asleep, so I really didn't think much of it. I figured she just stayed home from school sick. So I just asked her if she could move her head so I could see the TV, but she ignored me. Still facing the TV screen, annoyed, I asked her why she was home. Once again, she remained silent, coming to the conclusion that she was just being rude. Again, I closed my eyes and I fell back asleep. After about another hour, I got up and started to get ready for work, and I noticed my sister wasn't in her room or in the house. Concerned, I called her. After trying to call her a few times and getting nothing, I called my mother. She picked up, and I asked her if Sis told her where she was going. My mother, confused, asked me what I was talking about. She dropped Sis off at the school before going to work. My sister had been at school this whole time. In shock, I hung up and kept this to myself, convinced I was losing my mind. That it was all in my head, but I remember that moment so vividly, like what my sister was wearing, how she was sitting, how I felt a shift in the couch when she sat down. This wasn't a dream. This was real. It had to be. There was something in my house with me that morning, and it was not my sister. I kept this experience to myself. As a kid, I had what my parents called a very active imagination. Always seeing things, hearing things, and being easily spooked. So I think I got to the point where I just convinced myself this whole experience didn't happen and that there was some rational explanation. It actually took me a few years to tell my sister about this. Once again, mostly out of fear of being perceived as crazy, and I didn't want to spook my sister. But something she said to me changed that real fast. This takes place in September of 2022. My sister and I were waiting in line for a ride at a local amusement park. Every year, my dad's workplace would rent the whole park for employees and their families. We spent most of the day together as a family, but we spent most of the day together as a family. But about an hour before closing, Sis and I went to the back of the park to ride some night rides. So it was just the two of us, and the waiting was getting terribly boring. Sis and I aren't very close, and we don't have much in common. So we struggled to have a conversation and for the most part stood in silence. But out of the blue, she spoke up. Cat, want to hear something freaky? As a lover of all things spooky, that caught my attention. So I immediately replied with an eager yes. And as part of me wishes, I said no. My sister is a night owl and over the summer would stay up until 6 a.m. I had just started working a different job after quitting my nursing home position. That's another scary story for another day. So I was just starting to go to bed at around 12 a.m. every night, and I would get up around 10 a.m. So she would be the only one awake. 
One night, she noticed light coming from the crack in her bedroom door, and she heard both my voice and our mother's voice talking. Only, it was hard to understand, as if we were either speaking too quickly or just complete gibberish. She quickly grabbed her phone, checking the time, and her confusion only grew when she noted it was 3 a.m. What were we doing awake? Sometimes my mom and I would go to the front window if the weather was bad during the night and keep an eye on the storm. Or if there were sirens, we would both have a habit of being very nosy, so she figured that's what was going on. After a few minutes, she could still hear the voices and still see the lights. Growing curious, she got out of bed and opened the bedroom door and rushed into the hall, expected to see me and my mother by the window talking. Only, that's not what she saw. There were no lights on, it was completely dark beside the illumination from her phone screen, and there was no one in sight. Not our mother, and not me. Not even the cats were out there. Unsettled and confused, she turned to my bedroom door, thinking I was messing with her. She opened my door, and I was asleep with both cats. She goes back into the hall. Mom and Dad's bedroom door is also shut. She peeks in there, and both are sleeping. Now, my sister is a rational person. She was always the one to go into the basement first, tell the others that monsters and ghosts aren't real. So, she completely pushed this event out of her mind, because in her eyes, it wasn't a big deal. Maybe she was just overtired, or our grandfather's TV downstairs was a bit loud, and that's what she heard. But like my own experience, this kind of sat at the back of her head, and the house grew to be a little less comfortable. She mentioned how after that, she felt like there was always someone watching, as if they were tucked in the corner just observing her. She wasn't scared out of her mind, just a bit confused. When she told me that, a pit in my stomach opened up and I had chills. I laughed at first because, come on, we were in public and I didn't want to flip out. So we went on a ride and for the remaining time the park was open, we pushed that conversation on the back burner. On our way to meet our parents, we started talking about it again and I finally told her about what happened to me. How I saw her at home that day, spoke to her, and could remember what she wore. That was the first time I saw her get scared. I wasn't home, she kept saying. What do you think it was then? We still don't know. We don't know if we want to know. The only thing we are sure of is there is something in our house. This next one takes place on April 27th of 2022. This is not the exact location. This takes place somewhere on the Inishnabi territory, which is some, it's actually a huge area in Ontario. Um, but this particular location takes place somewhere between Toronto and Ottawa, and Bon Echo seemed to be dead smack in the middle of that. Hey everyone. I had a very strange encounter in my woods today, and I thought that I would share and get some opinions. For some background, I live in a small town between Toronto and Ottawa, on traditional Anishinaabe lands. I usually walk my dog every day, sometimes multiple times a day, all throughout my woods. I decided to take my dog out for a walk this afternoon, and not put in my headphones. I usually do. As I stated, I walk out there every day. As we were walking, I heard a voice call my name in almost a sing-song voice. Naturally, I stopped and looked around. I called for my dog to come to me, and he stopped where he was and stared at me for a while and then eventually came to me. I did not call out to the voice or acknowledge it. I walked around a little bit more and I still didn't see anything. Just for some context, I live with my parents and my mom knows I'm totally freaked out about skinwalkers. 
I had a bonfire a few nights ago and she hid and was calling out, trying to freak me out. I figured since she knew I was by myself, she was trying to freak me out. And it did sound similar to her voice. As I continued walking and looking, I heard, come over here. As soon as I heard it, I was instantly freaked out because not only did it sound further away than when my voice was called, and I know that the myth goes that when they sound close, they are far away and vice versa. But it also sounded like my own voice saying it. I also heard this call much more clearly than when my name was called. Anyways, I didn't acknowledge the voice and making sure my dog was with me, I got the hell out of there. When I got to the house, no one had been outside and no one called for me. My family has lived on this property for generations and we still live outside a very small town. I have no neighbors that would be close enough for me to hear them that clearly. I have no idea what was out there this afternoon, but I can tell you for certain I will never walk out there with my headphones on again. I also feel like it's worth mentioning that my sister has been whistling out there to freak me out, and I know that supposedly attracts them. I did also smoke shortly before walking, but I've been smoking daily for years, and I've never suffered from auditory hallucinations or heard any sort of voices while high. I've never posted on here before, but if I have any other experiences, I'll be sure to post them. I can honestly say that was the weirdest experience of my life. So a few days later of the original post, this was posted. I talked to my family and we have a trail cam we're going to set up where I heard it. Also talked to a few friends up my road and one saw a large black deer. So I'm thinking more along the lines of Windigo, setting up the cam this afternoon. Now, two days ago, she posted this. Sorry, was having issues with my Reddit account. Never caught anything on the trail cam, but my uncle was visiting a few months back and he grew up on this property. My mom brought up the story to him as a joke. I told him, I know my family thinks I'm crazy, but I know what I heard and I fully believed I had an experience with something that day. This man is one of the biggest pranksters I know, and he looked at me in all seriousness and told me he believed me 100%, and that he had had a similar experience growing up. Him and some of his friends, along with my aunt, used to think there were fairies in the woods, and apparently there's this one super old tree on my property that my almost 90-year-old grandfather remembers looking the exact same 80 years ago as it does now. This tree is all dead on the bottom, but still has leaves on the top branches, super weird, and nothing grows around it. Anyways, my uncle said one of his friends was hiding behind a tree one day and said he felt the sensation of claws being dug into his back and never came onto the property again. I know this is ranging from skinwalker territory, and I know it was way different than the encounters I had, but he told me he used to hear his name being called too. This last story was sent in by a viewer, and it takes place in autumn of 2017, and we're going to be heading to Scotland, UK. Now, I arbitrarily picked a location that suited the description of where this took place in Scotland, so it is not the exact location. Hi, as an avid viewer of your channel and being Scottish, I have cryptozoology in my veins due to my patriotic cryptic Nessie or Loch Ness Monster. I try to educate myself on varied cryptid encounters worldwide. I do, however, have a strong interest in Bigfoot Sasquatch, and I try to avail myself with most of the TV and YouTube materials related to this subject. I am aware of some examples of Bigfoot activities from your channel and TV shows. 
I would like to share an experience I had six years ago and ask for your opinion on the events. I will try to be as precise as possible to the events, but please excuse any spelling errors or grammatical errors as I suffer from dyslexia and recalling the event still makes me nervous to this day. I understand there are no recorded Sasquatch-related reports in the UK where I live. My experience is as follows. In the autumn of 2017, my late wife and I booked a holiday for two weeks in a log cabin in a remote part of Scotland. My late wife and I are both Scottish, but we live in England at the time. The cabin holiday was our escape from the hustle of everyday life, as it was so remote we had to hire a four-wheel drive vehicle to get there and take all the food we would need for our two-week stay, because the nearest civilization, shops, restaurant, people, etc., were a full-day round-trip driving away. Roughly 80 miles as the crow flies to the nearest town, and the cabin was the only inhabitation in the 15-mile-long glen it was located in. We arrived at our cabin around 1 p.m. on the Saturday of our first week. We had a lovely log burner in the cabin for warmth and romantic dinners. The first few nights were wonderful. On the morning of the Wednesday, I realized we were running out of logs. As we had plans for the day, I thought when we come back this evening, I will chop up more firewood. We didn't get back that evening until 6 p.m., and it was almost pitch black. Fortunately, the rear of the cabin was floodlit over the back garden. It wasn't exactly a garden, just a bare earth area with a shed for storage of timbers to be chopped for the log burner. So as my late wife was preparing our dinner, I decided to chop some logs for the fire in the cabin. By the time I changed into scruffy clothing suitable for chopping wood, it was completely pitch black outside. I started chopping the logs and after splitting three logs, I stopped for a cigarette. As I stood smoking, I heard four distinct whacks, similar to the noises I made using the axe to chop the logs. The noises came from around 800 yards to the west of me. I'm ex-army and we are trained to judge the direction and range of gunfire, which translates easily into any sound you hear. The wax surprised me as my late wife and I were the only inhabitants for roughly 15 square miles. So I shrugged it off, thinking I must have been hearing things. No less than 10 seconds later, I heard three louder wax coming from the northeast of me. I then thought, okay, Alex, you're hearing things. It's been a long day. You're tired. Your mind is playing tricks on you. So I finished my cigarette and carried on chopping the logs. However, occasionally, when I stop my chopping, I hear the occasional whack noise from both directions, but seemingly closer. I finished chopping what I thought would be enough logs for the next few days. I stacked them behind the back door of the cabin, within easy reach. Still thinking my mind was playing tricks, and these were echoes of my chopping from four or five minutes earlier. I went inside her cabin and I had dinner. We had an enjoyable evening together and I went to bed thinking nothing more of the wax. The next morning we got up and I went to the back door of the cabin to retrieve some of the stacked logs from the previous night to start a fire only to find the logs all over the backyard and strange footprints, like somebody had been in the garden barefoot during the night. But these footprints were between 12 to 16 inches long, and no one walks barefoot in autumn in Scotland when even peak daytime temperatures isn't greater than 15 Celsius. Nighttime drops to around zero. I wish I had taken photographs, This incident is what piqued my interest in Sasquatch, even though there has never been reports of Sasquatch in Scotland to my knowledge. Although from what I've learned, Scotland has the ideal ecosystem. Can you please let me have your thoughts or am I barking up the wrong tree? He finishes his email by saying, Kindest regards, Dr. Alex L. 
Now, he does have his first, his full first name and last name here, but I am not going to read it out as I don't know whether I have permission to do so. Although he did use part of his first name up above, so I've decided just to say his part of his first name. All right, guys, so that is going to be the end of the episodes for today. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's clips and today's encounter stories. I know this one is running a little bit on the long side. It's going to be a, around 30 minutes, 30 minutes long, which is uh, about double the time of what I normally upload. So I hope you guys truly enjoy this one. Um, now, Alex, to answer your question, um, I did respond to your email, so you do have that. But for the viewer's sake, uh, I do believe that you did encounter a Sasquatch. And what I found going on to Google Earth was I was a little bit surprised at how much forested area uh, actually is in Scotland. I kind of envisioned Scotland to be more um more rocky and uh like pastures uh type of rolling landscape not so much forested area so i was i was a little taken back to find out that at least i saw um or there was a list of i should say 16 top forested areas in scotland and when i took a look because i was trying to pick a location that suited the story because of you basically stating you were isolated for quite a few kilometers around you. Um, anyways, I was shocked in the amount of forested regions in Scotland. And like you said, where you were uh, would have been suitable for Sasquatch to, to live. So why not have them there? Or why would they not exist there? Anyways, I will let everybody else weigh in what they thought it could be. Uh, I don't think you guys have bears in the UK, but please let me know if you do. Um, but I can't think of anything else that would have digits to be able to pick up the logs and basically scatter them or in, in the other sense, grab a log and whack it against a tree to get the whacking sound you heard while you were chopping wood. I would like to thank everybody for submitting their stories. Uh, G Cat and Tyron Reed, thank you so much for allowing me to share your stories along with you, Alex. And I hope you guys en enjoyed the shorts that I, I found as well. But if these stories reminded you of an encounter that you may have had and would like to share, then please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story on this channel. Thank you for listening until the end. I truly appreciate it. Please hit the like button on your way out and smash the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Have a great weekend and I hope to see you all next week right here on Ontario Cryptids.